This video will analyze and examine international trade. International trade is the exchange of goods among international borders. International trade can have many benefits, such as enabling consumers in having a larger choice of products, allowing a more efficient allocation of resources, and most importantly, allowing consumers to buy goods for a lower price. Therefore, producers can purchase raw materials for a cheaper price. However, the price for the commodities differ due to access of natural sources, levels of technology, and finally, the quality of labor forces. Now, we will discuss the economic partnership between Brazil and China. In 1974, diplomatic relations were enhanced by the establishment of a Brazilian embassy in Beijing and a Chinese embassy in Brasilia. In addition, in 2009, China even replaced the US as Brazil's number one international trading partner. One would expect that the relationship between both countries seemed faultless and impeccable. Nevertheless, The Economist wrote an article on how Brazil started to seek protection due to frictions increasing rapidly. This article inspired and stimulated us to seek out possibilities and in a sense explain and analyze some economic procedures. As you all may know, there are allegations that China is manipulating their currency by keeping it artificially low. Consequently, the exchange rates will be artificially kept low. So what is an exchange rate? Well, it is the value of one currency expressed in terms of another currency. But why is this important? Well, you can see this as important because currency plays a major role in trade due to a country wanting to trade with another country with a stable currency. A fluctuating and fragile currency can lead to false speculations and therefore uncertainties in trade. In addition, you can say that China's progress in the last decade can be attributed to their currency, which finances their growth and their economic development through their booming exports. Due to the Chinese having a weaker currency, their exports are relatively cheaper than Brazil's. Therefore, more people buy Chinese products, indicating a current account surplus for the Chinese, because their exports exceed their imports. However, this leads to a current account deficit in Brazil due to the contradiction. As you can see in the J-curve now, it shows that the current account deficit firstly decreases, as other countries wouldn't realize automatically that prices have decreased and some contracts for goods cannot be broken. So what is a balance of payment? Well, it is a record of a value of all transactions between citizens in one country and citizens in all other countries in the world over a given time period. So according to the price specialty flow mechanism implied by David Hume, the exchange rates adjust over time and as a consequence also the balance of payments. Hence this should lead to an overall balance of, balance of payment of zero. Nevertheless, the assumptions of this economic theory are based on free trade and due to protection, uh, protectionism such as tariffs, administrative barriers and dumping, there is no free mobility of goods and services. So, what has the Brazilian government done to eliminate these friction providing terms? Well, the Brazilian government set a tariff as a trade barrier on the Chinese car imports. Just to clarify, a tariff is a tax charged on imported goods. As one can see in the graph, this is a policy to aid the domestic production. Domestic production increases to Q2, while the foreign producers supply the rest, which is seen to be Q2 to Q3. Even though they receive price D, they pay off the tariff to the government, thus leading to an increase in government revenue. Brazil would benefit in the form of tax revenue by imposing taxes on imports. In addition, they would promote their domestic market, consequently increasing employment rates. However, we have to highlight a welfare or deadweight loss, which would contradict the efficiency, and rather portray the imposed policy as a distortion to the free market. Basically, the government and the domestic producers benefit at the expense of the consumers. The following protectionist schemes did not occur between Brazil and China. However, they are worth mentioning. Administrative barriers are sometimes imposed to stop the imports of goods. The red tape is a process in which one complicates the paperwork to get the good into the country. This slows down the procedure, therefore leading to a higher cost. Embargoes are a very drastic quota that are usually set due to political disputes, like the US embargo on Cuba. A quota is a physical limit on the value of goods that can be imported into a country. Health and safety and environmental st uh, standards are restrictions that are placed to complicate the procedure. This can be argued as an economical regulation. However, many people argue that it is also a political statement. One of the main reasons why China has been profitable in its trading is through the use of dumping, where they have been selling their products under the marginal cost to other countries. 
whereby they have been destroying the economic competition in these domestic markets. As a consequence, Brazil was allowed to impose anti-dumping measures to reduce the impact and damage on their domestic market. So, to conclude, in respect to China, exchange rates are by nature a self-regulating mechanism. While China in the short run benefits of having a cheap currency, causing a balance of trade surplus, in the long run it could be favorable to have a stronger currency, as they could not only buy more products, but the wealth of the nation and of an individual would increase. Now back to Brazil. Should they act as an authoritarian towards China? Here are some thought-provoking figures. Brazil imposed a 30 percentage point tax increase on cars with less than 65% local content. This took the tax on some imported models to a punitive 55%, on top of the import tariffs. The tax increase is a blatant act of protectionism. It definitely violates the rules of the World Trade Organization, of which Brazil is usually an enthusiastic supporter. It shows how sensitive the government is to claims that the country is suffering deindustrialization. China announced they would invest $19 billion in the Brazilian economy. So what would you do if you were governing Brazil? Carry on imposing protectionist policies, or would you close an eye to allow your biggest and most vital trading partner to continue exploiting your resources? Please share your thoughts and comments. Do you believe that the tariffs Brazil have set are justified? And what is your opinion towards the allegations that China is manipulating their currency for their own benefits?